Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day because I'm playing around with some Christmas stuff. So this project is sponsored by PCBWay.com and uh, I was browsing around their awesome shared projects gallery and I found this thing and I thought it looked pretty cool. It is a shield basically, a hat that can go on top of a Raspberry Pi. Now one of the things, I use Raspberry Pis all the time as little computers and stuff like that, but I very rarely use the GPIO. So I thought this would be kind of a fun opportunity to practice a little bit of SMD soldering and uh, pop one of these things on top of Raspberry Pi and use it to show you guys some very basic stuff about one of my favorite programs of all time, Node Red. So this thing uses uh, a little 40 pin header that is right angle, this one's a little bit bent, but essentially uh, it goes on here and that allows you to put this on top of the Raspberry Pi and leave some room for this thing to kind of sit behind the network port. And then um, we're gonna solder some 1206. These are LEDs and we've got some resistors. Now there's a lot of leeway in uh, you know what resistors you use and even the size of LEDs. These uh, pads are fairly generous here. So you can, you can use 1206, you can use ones that are a little smaller. You could even use ones that are a little bit bigger, but um, I had some 1206. And so basically you can put whatever color LEDs you want wherever you want them and you solder this thing on this side. Um, it does have a couple of extra bonus features it has room for an OLED screen. Now, I was not able to get the OLED screen to work in Node Red, um, and I just plain ran out of time for that, but I have been able to get it to work in Python. So uh, I will include some code in the description for Node Red and for Python uh, that'll let you light up the lights in either one of those things. And uh, I do have the screen working in Python. And on the back, you can put a bunch of different resistors back here. So it's essentially, I think, nine LEDs and nine resistors, and uh, you can choose whatever color LEDs you want. You can choose basically anything between, you know, let's say, 200 ohm and even a thousand ohm on the resistor. So I actually get these little packs from Amazon, uh, and this is one of these like multi packs. And so I chose a value that I knew I wasn't going to use very much. So I think I chose like 240 or 270, somewhere in that range. So SMD can be a little bit finicky, but the way I tend to do it is put a little dab of solder on one side, one pad, and then heat it up together with the LED, drop it down, and then uh, solder the other side after it cools down. They do give you a little handy dandy guide down here. In fact, you can even practice soldering one here. And it tells you that this little um, dot on the LED goes toward the negative side and the side without the dot goes toward the positive. And so every one of them is marked so you know which way these things go. And then of course the resistors don't have any kind of polarity. There's also um, a place to put a button or two here if you want to. And just, you know, it's kind of a kind of a cool little thing. You can solder the thing together in about 15 minutes and practice your SMB and begin interacting with it on node red so when you are done it will look something like this i've got some leds soldered on here not always straight not always perfect uh, but they are on i've got my little oled screen and then on the back over here i've got the little resistors and as you can see i soldered a little push button on here that we're going to use in node red so if you are looking for a way to get some family members into coding or if you want to you know maybe do some kind of little soldering party with your nieces and nephews and stuff like that uh, i think this is a really cool project you can go over to pcbway.com i will have a link in the description push one button you can have the thing in your cart and have it here in plenty of time for christmas and the leds are cheap the resistors are cheap these things you can get off ebay really cheap and uh, you can have some fun with it. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of code. We're gonna fire this thing up and we're gonna show you a little bit about Node Red. All right, so I'm over here on the Raspberry Pi. The reason why it looks so crappy is that I'm viewing this over VNC, so I'm on a remote connection just to make it easier to screen share, but that's not really important. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is check to see if you actually have Node Red. Most of the time you're gonna have it in here, but if you don't, um, you can click this little terminal thing here and then uh, there's a link that I'll put in the description. All you really have to do is copy this bash script. It'll take probably 15 minutes to install. And then you can decide, do you want this thing to start automatically? And if you do in that um, little command prompt, you just enter this. Otherwise you can come in here and just type in node red start, node red stop, whenever you want to start and stop node red. Um, now you can do this on the Raspberry Pi uh, itself. But the way I actually like to do it is remotely. So if you hover over this up and down button, you'll see the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And so what you're going to do is you're going to enter that into your browser without the slash 24 on the end. 
So for me on my main desktop computer, that's 192.168.95.197, then you're going to have a colon 1880, and that will take you into Node Red. Now, I actually do have some stuff set up over here that I will give you, um, but I want to talk a little bit about how these things work. So these over here are the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. So the Raspberry Pi has pins that can be inputs, it has pins that can be outputs, and it has pins that can be both. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to configure those pins. Now, to save you guys some time, I did the basics here, but we're going to um, grab another one here, and this is an output pin. So essentially, anything that you want to be able to send voltage out, like to an LED, uh, you're going to configure as an output pin. And so what you do is you look at the number, it's actually printed on the circuit board, and uh, in my situation, GPIO6, I believe, is the top green LED. So I'm just going to call it, uh, I'm just going to call it star, because it's the top green LED on top of the tree. And I'm going to hit this, and now I've configured that this little node here will interact with that pin. Now, the way that works is all you have to do is we're going to start with something called an inject node, and it's just a very simple way to get things started. Things in node red flow from left to right. So as you can see over here, we have a, um, a button, and when I click that button, it triggers something to go to the right, and then it would go through any of the other nodes that are on the way. Now, if you'll notice, there are some that you can do in the middle. So this can go in here, out here, down here. You can do all kinds of stuff. We'll show you. But um, right now we have one going from uh, an input to an output. And so I'm actually going to make two of these by control seeing them. And I'm going to click this and I want to configure this. So we're going to get into topic and payload later, but all you need to know right now is that we want to send it a number. And the number we want to send it is a 1, and that is if we want to turn the LED on. And so the way these things work, they're binary. So if you hit, if you send it a 1, it will turn it on. If you send it a 0, what do you think it'll do? It'll turn it off. And so we're going to come in here and hit off. Um, and then before you actually do anything with any of these changes you made, you need to hit the deploy button. So now when I hit these little buttons over here on the left, you can see that I can turn the little star on top of the tree on. I can turn it off. I can turn it on. I can turn it off and turn it on, turn it off. And so as many times I hit that button, that little GPIO pin on the board will do exactly what I told it to do. Now, one of the other things you can notice, I can click these lines to remove them. Uh, I can actually connect these things to multiple uh, once I can connect one just over and over and over again and hit deploy and now when I hit this it's going to turn on three of the red LEDs. Um, notice it didn't turn the green one off because I hadn't turned it off. If I wanted to connect it here I can connect this here and I can turn these on. I can turn this off. Um, I can even add this into the equation and hit deploy. So now when I hit this I'm going to turn on three red LEDs, one green and then this because it's only connected to this green one here it'll turn that off without turning everything else off. So you have a lot of control and you can make some really complicated things with just a couple of lines. All right, so let's get a little fancier. We're gonna go ahead and turn all these other LEDs off and uh, we're gonna group them all together and we're gonna make uh, a little group of LEDs where all the red ones will come on at once. So deploy, hit off, they're all off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all these lines so you can see a little bit better. I'm just control clicking them and then I hit delete. And I'll come in here and control click and delete. And while we're at it, we'll just control click and delete. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use a function node just to kind of join everything together. It's not going to do anything. We're not going to write any functions. We may do that later in the video. But for now, we're just going to use this to kind of connect them all together here. And uh, then what we're going to do is we are going to, we'll start off with just this where we go on and off. And so uh, we've got this one and this one. And this just kind of shows you that they're all, instead of taking lines from all of these, we're connecting them together just into one spot. So if I come in here, you can see that now we can turn all the red ones on. We can turn all the red ones off. And I still have a green one on. That's fine. Um, but anyway, so we can turn those on and off and do a little bit there. Now, what if we wanted to make them blink? Well, let's try this. Let's delete this. And what we're going to do is first of all, we're gonna start with a trigger node. And so, in fact, we'll just go ahead just to avoid any confusion. We're going to get rid of the function node and we're gonna put this trigger node in. And what we're gonna do is this thing is gonna work where after it receives something, 500 milliseconds later, which is half a second, it's going to 
turn it off. So it's going to, as soon as something hits us, it doesn't matter what it is. As soon as something hits us, it's going to send a one, which is going to turn all these LEDs on. And then it's going to wait half a second and it's going to turn all the LEDs off. And that's it. And so um, as I click this, you can see I'm going to connect this here and I'm going to hit deploy. And now when I hit this, it turns them on for half a second. Then they immediately turn off on their own. I'm not doing anything to turn them off. They're just turning off on their own. So click here off. All right. So as you can see, um, and you can even see down here when they're on, you'll see that there's a little blue light down here. So very cool. We have a little bit of automation happening. Now, what if we want to repeat that? Well, we can actually do that in here where if you come down to the bottom, we can say that we want this to happen in an interval every one second. So what it's going to do is every one second, it's going to send a new trigger to this thing. And then this is going to wait. It's going to send it on. Then half a second later, it's going to turn it off. So I'm going to hit this. And now we have a red blinking LED where it's on for half a second, off for half a second. All right. Now, what if we wanted to get even more advanced where we come in here and copy this and I'm going to do another one of these up here like so. And what we could do is actually introduce a random number. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, do two more things. First of all, we're going to generate a random number. And so if I come over here, I'm going to say that I want to give me a random number between, let's just say one and two. So let's take a look at what that does. If I hit an inject node over here and I put a debug node over here, you can see I can go straight through the middle of this one and hit this little debug button over here. Um, what it's going to do is when I hit deploy, it's going to generate a random number. So in that time it gave me a two and two, 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 one, one, two, two. <laughs> seems to be biased toward twos right now. There we go. Got a bunch of ones in a row. Um, so all of a sudden you're seeing that we can generate some idea of randomness. Now, what are we going to do with that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do something called a switch statement. And so what you can do, we're going to drag this together here. We're going to tell it that if it's getting a one, send it out to the top dot. And I'll show you what that means in a second. Or if it's a two, send it out to the bottom dot. Now you can see all of a sudden now we have two dots in here. So in the event that this random number generator generates a, um, a one, we're going to send it up here. But in the event it generates a two, we're going to send it down here. So now um, I'm going to deploy. And you can see that as I click this, we're getting different lights are lighting up depending on what um, it generated, whether it was a one or a two. And in fact, we can even keep this if we wanted to see what was going on. We could come over here with the debug node. I can hit this button to clear it all. Now all I have to do is as I hit this button, I can see that it's generating ones and twos and I can actually see uh, which set is lighting up. Now, of course, we can automate that if we get rid of this and do the little repeat thing where now it's going to send this every one second. It's going to send a new one out. So we can come over here, click this, hit deploy, and then hit deploy. And then all we have to do is get the party started and it's going to blink on its own. And in fact, we could actually take that one step further by letting this do another one, which would generate a random number from a one to a three. And then we can come up here and change the switch statement and add another condition where if it gets a three, it lights them both up. So we have this one here and we can drag this to both of them. And now all of a sudden we have this random number generator where you're either going to light up red or you're going to light up green or you're going to light up both. So I hit deploy and now we've got greens and reds and combinations and all that kind of stuff. So you're getting all kinds of cool logic from just a few little lines. Okay, so up until this point, we've really only dealt with the outputs, like things like LEDs. And now we are going to take a look at an input. So I'm gonna come down here to the Raspberry Pi GPIO and I'm gonna grab an input. And you'll see one of the things I like to do over and over again is to um, get a debug node when I first bring something in because I wanna make sure it's doing what I think it's doing. So I'm gonna come over here and the board tells me that I soldered that button to GPIO 22. Um, so I'm going to do that and I'm going to call it a button. And then in this case, usually with an Arduino, I use a pull up resistor, but in this case, I'm going to use a pull down resistor and we're going to hit done. Um, and so I'm going to deploy it. And what it's going to do is when that button is pushed, hopefully I'm going to see something show up over here in the debug node. So we're going to write a little function to do something a little bit more advanced. It's not 
that serious. But um, we're going to use the button and we're going to have it light up some lights just depending on what the button is doing. And uh, just to give you a little bit of a history, uh, Node Red is based on Node.js and Node.js is based on JavaScript. So a lot of times you'll Google, hey, how do I do this in Node Red? Or if you just Google, how do I do this in JavaScript? A lot of times you'll be more likely to get an answer. So um, anyway, we're going to take this here and we are going to take this function and let's just grab uh, five random LEDs. So we'll grab this one, this one, this one, and this one. And uh, so we're going to have the button come in here. And at this point, we're not really going to have it do anything. Uh, if the button is pushed in, we'll get a one and that will make these light up. So the real trick comes in, and again, this isn't that big of a trick. You could do a little switch thing here, but um, we're going to copy this thing, and I just want to show you a little bit about how these uh, functions work. So we're going to grab this. Now we're going to connect to all the ones that we weren't connected to before, just so we get a nice little assortment of lights as opposed to being all green and all red. I feel like we've been a little bit boring on this video. So we've got this. Um, now, as you can see here, it is telling it to return a message, which basically means that Whatever comes in, uh, whether it's a zero or one, is going to be message dot payload, and that's a little weird, but you're going to be that's either going to be a zero or a one. So what we're going to do is we need to reverse that. So where this one automatically knows what to do, the one turns the lights on and the zero turns the lights off. We want this one to be the opposite. So what we're going to do is just write a little function here where we say if message dot payload equals equals one, then we're going to say message dot payload equals zero and then we're going to say else um, message dot payload equals one so basically what we're doing is we're having opposite day in the event that a one comes in we want to tell it that's a zero so if a one comes in on this that means that these lights are going to light up and these lights are going to turn off and then opposite day in the event that this is zero we're going to send it a one and so that should be it if i push this button we should have the lights kind of reversing so it didn't take very much a very simple little change of logic now we could actually use something like this this change one here we could come in here and we could say um you know change this search for a one and switch it with a zero or whatever um, but you can see that was pretty easy to do in javascript so I do want to thank PCBWay once again for sponsoring this project. I'll have a link in the description. One click, you add it to your cart, you buy some LEDs if you don't already have them, and a connector, and you are good to go. So hey, thanks for watching and have a great day.